What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Heavy Metallurgy Wednesday Album Club. I am one of your co-hosts. I'm Marty. I'm from the Glorious Dead. We got this fine young whippersnapper down here. Kellen, how you doing, man? I'm all right. I mean, I, I needed this this evening, so uh, I am so happy to be here. Right on. Glad to have you, as always. Yeah. Yeah, so we jump into uh, how are you doing, Marty? I like, I, you know, I just show up here and it's like I'm on stage and I didn't get a chance to talk. So I'm how good. You doing? I'm fine. Same old shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And boring. Thanks for asking. You know what happens when you're late joining the party? You're just trying to catch up. So yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. let me see uh, what I've been spinning this week. Um, so at the behest of. Uh, of Marty, and I have to shout out to uh, Matt over at the kind of active Dark Path. Um, he's, he's pretty much out of it, but um, yeah. but I mean, uh, I, I want to shout out Matt and Eric Bauer. They've talked a lot, um, Dennis, Jeff, but um, this week I was preparing for uh, this release, and mm. one of the probably the industrial band that everyone told me to check out first so this is cleanse fold manipulate for those who are just uh listening to this on a podcast or whatever they're the end boss of industrial bands as far as i'm concerned yeah i mean it was, it was a great place for me to start i hadn't listened to this for a, a while so i pulled it off the shelf and uh gave it a spin this week leading into album club beyond that um i pulled off this classic what did you think of it though what did you think of it though you didn't get into it too much oh what do I, I well, th- I mean, I like this a lot, but this is very much of a true, like industrial electronic record in yeah. my opinion, relative to the one that we're gonna be talking about tonight. Um, I, I like it, but it, it's a bit more of a vibe. So kind of nightmarish I, I just, at times. Yeah, totally nightmarish, creepy samples. I think it's much more of a true industrial record, though. Oh yeah, and um, when we get into the pitch shifter, it kind of is a little bit more on the metal side of things. But um, anyway, so I like it. I know there's a few others that um, you've recommended that I check out, uh, but I think I'll probably be adding pro- by the end of things four or five records from uh, Skinny Puppy to my collection. Um, right on. Moving on. Um, this is All Wishes Dance from Mortuary Drape, their debut release. Just awesome occult metal. I, I think there's probably a bunch of different subgenres that, especially early Mortuary Drape, sort of walks around. But this is just pure, you can call it black metal, you can call it kind of dark thrash. At times, it reminds me a lot of um, Possessed, but. It's also right. something very specific. It's hard to, to pigeonhole that band this, the, or that early stuff, man. I never could really put my finger on that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and that's kind of what you like about it, right? But super creepy. I mean, just this whole scene, like this staged cemetery artwork, um, it's kind of campy and you can tell like whatever you, you pulled it together for your high school project kind of like album cover. <laughs> um, but uh <laughs> At the same time, it, it works for sort of the lo-fi. <clears throat> of the um, and then last one, we just got a promo for this, but I hadn't spun this. Um, this is uh, in a while, but this is a Greek black metal band, um, Funeral Storm. I believe this is from 2019, uh, Arcane Mysteries. But um, yeah, I think they've got a new release coming out here, I want to say in a month or so. And uh, this is kind of classic Greek black metal from a younger band. If you dig that stuff coming out of Greece, for sure check out Funeral Storm. Right on. Good stack of tunes there. Jim, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. We're uh, preparing for the imminent arrival of uh, Trevor City native. Um, uh, Jackson's friend Fonzie is flying down solo. Holy um, crap, Amoli. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was his first flight ever solo. We're picking him up from a nearby airport uh, tomorrow. He's going to stay the weekend with us. So That's um, awesome. So, All yeah, right. that's pretty cool. Um, nice. Going to do a little water park action. So, mm-hmm. it's fun. All right. So, got a little monotheist going on. Um, nice. 
man, you know, I, I'm a huge, of course, Frost fan. I've been since I first heard him back in the 80s. But, you know, I got to tell you, you know, this was a, uh, um, like, pretty much everything after Jamaica Terry Home was a grower for me. But, you know, like, it's like over the years, just the more, the older it gets, the more I like it. It's like the weirdest thing. When it gets back with me. But you know, definitely a good song, Swan, song, Swan song. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, great stuff. Uh, I think I bought this from your distro, Marty. Uh, Vital Remains, <clears throat> um, Into Cold Darkness. Man, man, this thing rolls, man. Crushing, yeah. I just, you know, the riffs, but also, man, I love the keyboards on this. I mean, they really achieve that creep, creepy atmosphere, man. I mean, I feel like I am a wolf howling at the moon when I listen to this record. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, that that album cover for a death metal record, I think, is totally it's it's unique. It kind of doesn't tell it. It's a different story when you put it on, right? It looks like a, a black metal record for sure. Totally, totally. And though this is pure death metal, I'm it's so evil. Like, I get an, a black metal vibe from it. You know what I mean? It's just so dark, man. I, I and it just never gets old. I, I really love this. Really love this record. I need to get it on vinyl. Um, uh, and man. Got to hear the voice of the Ronnie James, you know, oh, yeah. just uh, never gets old, always in rotation. Had to hear the Sabbath today or uh, this week, rather. And uh, it was just a smother deal as well. But we're going to show this one. So <laughs> and that's what I got going on. All right. I think you picked tonight, too, don't you, Jim? I do. Yep. OK. Right on, TJ. Good to see you. How you doing? I am as happy as a diabetic at a Krispy Kreme. Anyway, um, I got uh, got the new coffins. Uh, this is in the sleeve, and you can't see. I need to get one of them fancy toilet lights that you guys use all the time. Uh, Sinister Oath. This is uh, classic uh, coffins. It's crushes, mid paced. I mean, that's not know. their prog album. No, not yet. <laughs> oh. Not yet. It's really good. It's it's really good. It, it just it just uh, plods along and, and it's it's just solid as hell. Um, Cheers, Daniel. I don't know if we've ever had anyone watch from Africa live before. Cheers to you, man. Good to see you. Thanks then, for joining us. What's up? And then uh, I, getting into this a little, again. I don't know if anybody has ever my autopsy coffee table <laughs> collection. Um, it's full of eps and demo stuff and live rehearsals and stuff and i i was i spun a little bit of this this week and um it's 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 pretty neat um there's some cool shit on here um and then uh otherwise i just been listening to stuff uh, fishing around on spotify listening to i listened to a bunch of uh there's a finger uh finger style guitar player named andy mckee that I really dig a lot. And I've been listening to a bunch of his stuff on Spotify this week. So um, that's kind of, kind of it. All right. Okay. And I'm up and hello everyone. And what have I been listening to? I am still on this Wormwood kick. All three of these records I've been enjoying. We've got uh Ghostlands, the debut. Um, oh my God. Not our vet. Not of it, their second album. I'll tell you the song on here, The Isolationist, really, really great. And uh the well, they got a new one coming, but Arc of It is their latest album. And I just like the way Tobias create writes this music. There's like an insomnium vibe on this a little bit. Uh his guitar solos are very rock and rollish. I mean, not like, you know, hey baby glam metal type, but they're just they have a good rock sensibility. They're really melodic and really memorable solos. I just really like the sound. And I finally, after all these years, I've never heard this a note from this album. I finally scored a copy of this. Solstice, Solstice self-titled, Florida-based band. Hey, Mel, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, this one won't change your mind. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know what? This is what I expected. It sounds like a, a Florida death metal band. I like it. It didn't blow me away. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's I solid. Think it's a great record. I think it's, I think a it's great solid. record. It just isn't. I've heard it before. It seems like when I put it on, it didn't sound new or exciting to me. I, it felt like I've heard it a bunch of times before. But like I said, I put it on when I wasn't in the mood for it. So I, I got it super cheap. It's a 
Code 7, Hammerheart Records, Repress, or Punishment 18. I don't know. There's three different labels listed on the back. And there's also a demo bonus tracks on here, too. So I got it super cheap, and I'll definitely be swinging back around to this. But we're here tonight. Kellen was the one that picked this album, the third, well, the third release. It's the second full-length album by Nottingham England's Pitch Shifter, Desensitized. A little bit of history about the band. Uh, Pitch Shifter are an English industrial metal band from Nottingham, England, formed in 1989. The band was started by lead guitarist and programmer Johnny A. Carter and bassist and vocalist Mark Clayton. The band's early material was categorized for its gritty industrial metal sound with downtuned guitars and the use of drum machines and has been cited as one of the originators of the genre along with Godflesh. With later albums, the group's music became increasingly more melodic and strongly influenced by new metal and drum and bass, particularly particularly evident. In nailed, their 19, it. nailed it. Nailed it. Their <laughs> 1998 release, PitchShifter.com, which has been compared to with groups like The Prodigy. Although Pitch Shifter has found little mainstream success, the band managed to gain a platinum certification with the release of the Mortal Kombat Annihilation soundtrack. Since its formation, the band has released six studio albums, three EPs, and eight music videos. The band has played in various festivals around the world, including including OzFest, Phoenix Festival, and Damnation Festival. So there you go. And um, before we get... Obviously, I'm going to ask first impression here, but one thing we kind of talked about doing last week that we're going to start doing is the first impression most people have of an album is the cover art that is your first whether it's conscious or subconscious you look at something you instantly form an opinion what it may sound like so yes i'm asking first impression here but i'm also asking what your first impression of the cover is first and then yeah, do you like the cover all that stuff and then we're going to talk about your first impression of the music so jim we'll start with you first impression uh what's the name of that dude that plays uh magneto in the later x-men movies um, oh ian uh mccullough no not the old guy man no know. the young guy i know um, exactly what you're talking Fassbender? about but i don't know what his name is which which they kill is it michael fassbender yes michael fassbender yeah it looks like michael fassbender getting some acupuncture to me <laughs> <laughs> right on <laughs> yeah yeah so uh i i mean i guess that's not what it is uh fassbender someone says fassbender yeah 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 that that's that's what it it says to me um i there's not really much for me to take <laughs> yeah there's, it's not a real it's not a real big you know impact Doesn't, cover uh, artwork but anyway it didn't really say much to me or give me any inkling as to what it was going to sound yeah. like yeah. do you want me to go roll right into yeah it? go right on to your other your first oh, okay cool. yep. um uh uh this was a slog for me man <laughs> uh yeah i uh yeah, I, I struggled with this getting through it. Um, uh, you know, definitely not my style at all. Um, you know, if, if I ever reach for something like this, I'm reaching for a mind is a terrible thing to taste by ministry, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, soul storms, darkness, visible, which came mm -hmm. around, out around the same time. Yep. You know, th th those are the albums that I really like. And of course, you know, street cleaner is the God of all this stuff. Uh, no pun intended. Maybe it should be intended. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, and, and, you know, uh, I wasn't that familiar with pitch shifter, um, uh, to begin with, but when I went back and listened to their first album, first full length industrial, man, I thought it was way better, like way heavier, way darker, it's more crust. It's crust aligned and it's great. It's yeah. Awesome. So this is like way cleaner. Um, and you know, one of the hallmarks of industrial is that it's repetitive, but for me, this was just too repetitive and very little payoff. Now, as the week wore on, it, it, it got better for me. You know what I mean? I, I, I started getting into it a little bit more and all that, but, but uh, de definitely first impressions uh, was tough. And I was definitely wanting to, and it, like, actually I made it halfway through the album the first time stopped and listened to soul storm, uh, darkness visible all the way through. And then went back to this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, that helped me out. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, TJ. Yeah, so uh, my uh, my impression of the cover art is how they got James Taylor to sit for acupuncture and pictures. That's he's a pretty slow looks. moving guy. He's probably yeah. You know, his I, music I is so. slow and boring, you know, and so I is. So. I don't think he's boring, but uh, you know. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like James Taylor to me. Um, 
So um, that's about all I got out of it. I guess that they were supposed to, I don't know what it's supposed to be, cryptic and weird, or I don't know who the hell knows. It was kind of an afterthought to me. Um, wasn't a lot going on there. <coughs> yeah, I, um, <coughs> excuse me, everybody. Um, so Godflesh, Street Cleaner. I got that pretty close to the time it came out. And the fact that I fell in love with that record, I, you know, I just absolutely love that record. And I did, I actually forgot to, I did listen to that this week in very much the same way Jim had to go and revisit something else to kind of wash this out of his mouth, so to speak. I wouldn't quite go that far, but, um, the, I would, this, um, I was hoping for, for, uh, God flesh. I, I caught shades of that in there. Um, but in, I found this to be kind of boring. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I don't know. It, my first impression is just not very challenging sonically. I was hoping for, you know, the repetitiveness and stuff. I expect that, you know, it is, it's kind of, you know, again, like Jim says, it's kind of part, part and parcel for what this style is and the mechanical nature of it. But I just, it wasn't very, just didn't really, wasn't a whole lot going on with these songs. And I just wasn't really, I just not very uh, drawn in by it. So, um, you know, we'll get farther into it. But yeah, my first impression is, was kind of, um, you know, time to take a nap. <laughs> so. <laughs> right on. Um, for me, I mean, I, I'm a fan of this, the early, the stuff before this album, the demo. This is crushing. I mean, God flesh worship, however you want to say it, it's God flesh, but crustier. I love the pitch shifted vocals. It's just a dirty, uh, yeah, pounding. That, that, one, that one's heavy and awesome. it's ugly. It's ugly as hell. And yeah. then this one, this is a mini LP submit. This is my favorite pitch shifter. It's basically, they streamlined the sound a bit, but the songs are still, uh, Clayton still pitch shifted. He still sounds demonic as hell. The songs on here are great, absolutely great. So when I heard that Desensitize was coming, I was psyched. And cover, first impression, the cover, you know, you see these other album covers, it's very much in line with their aesthetic. So it, it, it nothing is a red flag here for me. But I got the tape, and I mean, <laughs> for one, they actually went and got a really slick production. The production on this thing, it sounds like there's a lot of money pumped into the production. So that right away is uh, kind of a red flag. I don't say a band has to go and continue to be, you know, sounding dirty and of the earth and all that stuff. You know, obviously bands progress. They want to get better. They want to maybe improve their sound. And that's an, this is definitely an example of that. But one thing, even though I still like some of the songs on this record, it felt like a transitional record. Like I said in the intro, it felt like they were going somewhere. And we, it was really not sure yet where that somewhere was going to be. Obviously, they revealed themselves to be more new metal, more dubstep or drum and bass or whatever dancey crap. I couldn't follow them where they wanted to go. And um, but this this had its moments. There's a few songs on here I like, but right away, first impression, they dropped the pitch shifter, singing through the pitch shifter. He fancied himself a singer, a yeller, and. Um, you take away that kind of twisted demonic vocal, you know, augmentation and their lyrics have always been like short statements. The songs are longer on this record. So he's repeating lines over and over and over and over again. It, it just isn't vocally. The music is what it is. It's kind of, it falls in line with the whole, you know, soul storm, uh, puncture, um, other bands in that i mean there's a bunch of bands all dead world i mean they're all bands that all kind of fall into the pitch shifter slash godflesh aesthetic i mean the music is where it's supposed to be but the the vocals are kind of a drag for me so that was my first impression when i remember getting it back when it came out um kellen your thoughts so this is pretty new for me uh i'm someone who like when I listen to this in genres like industrial are buried like in the recesses of my subconscious because I was a very young child, like elementary school kid 
when this stuff was blowing up. So like I never bought a CD of it. I never had a cassette, but I was right culturally consuming it probably through movie soundtracks or commercials or, you know, stuff like that, where it makes up a certain sound um, during a time period in your life. But I couldn't tell you, you know, when I was seven or eight, like what I was listening to. Right. So that's the, the immediate reaction I have when I listen to this. The album cover to me. I kind of it looks to me like an instruction manual, yeah. you know, like and you're putting together a shelf and it's like part one, part two goes into part three kind of. And to, to do that, I guess, with a human being, I kind of read that as like robotic approach to how you would assemble a human, which, mm -hmm. and which I think works for the, like the industrial sort of aesthetic. Sure. Of but that's kind of what I got from that. Um, yeah, so. To your point, I don't like everyone who has talked about this band has talked about this being the end point uh, because oh, no oh, one yeah. that I spent a lot of time listening to enjoys new metal to a, a large extent. It's like stay away from everything that came after. Um, I would say that's a safe bet. There's a couple yeah. people here that said they like some of the stuff after and I, cool, but I, I can't go there. No, no. I used but, to get the promos back in the day when we were. Yeah. And no. No. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. I mean, I, I just I think I'll I'll take that advice, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> but but I I was interested because it is sort of an intersection when I listen to this between like I can hear other genres that had developed in the '90s sort of starting to creep into this sound, like without even listening to what I had been sort of warned against. I can hear inklings of it here. Yeah. Um, and which is kind of interesting for so many people to who I like uh, respect their musical opinion to have at some level a degree of investment in this record. So um, it was kind of an interesting balance for someone like myself who's kind of new to this, um, who's heard a lot about the record and is kind of after listening to, you know, a handful of songs um, like, man, I'm kind of intrigued that so many people are into this. So. Anyway, that's kind of where I went with that. Right on. Do you have a topic for us? Sure. So question for this evening. Um, early 90s metal has been at the epicenter of cultural metal consciousness over the past decade or so. During this era, outside of extreme metal, Genres that achieved more commercial success like groove and new metal are mostly reviled today. Other genres like goth and industrial are more often praised. However, they haven't really inspired a resurgence in the sound. So the question is, for a time period that has all this interest in early 90s metal, um, for two genres like goth and industrial that are still praised today, why hasn't there been more interest or why aren't there younger bands trying to explore this sound to a greater extent? Um, why has it remained mostly something that is concentrated in the past? And to follow up on that, is that is there a sound or a place for a sound like this in 2024? Jim. So, uh, I'll avoid the goth piece because I I don't own any goth and I don't really I can't really speak to it um, uh, yeah intelligently. Would you, but would you say like typo negatives something you'd listen to? Oh God, yeah, I love very typo. goth. I, yeah, I have, yeah, I love I love typo. I have all their stuff. I'm a huge typo fan. So yeah, okay. I, 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 I thought so. I thought I was like I'm pretty sure he's kind of into that band. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if we're if we're talking typo goth, then yes, I'm 100 percent there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say then if we're talking type of we're on that subject, I would say that, uh, you know, the thing about them is, you know, they were, in my opinion, they were so unique with the way they combined goth and metal. Like it was very distinct and, and, uh, and, you know, the, they mixed so many genres and like just one song, <laughs> you know, you'd have like a weird Beatles break in the middle of it all or whatever, uh, mixed in with like the doom metal and the, and the goth, um, I think I think particularly their their palette is like really hard to to duplicate, you know. I, I, I and 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 or and to do it with some sense of 
to be like typo and to be original, I think it's really difficult because in my opinion, they were utterly unique, you know? Um, so I think for that particular band, that that's the challenge. Um, and in terms of uh, uh, goth in general, like I'll, I'll stay away from that because that's pretty much the beginning and end for me there. But, um, but industrial, I, my, my view is the reason why it, it hasn't like carried on with the same level of excitement as other like metal genres is because that what is in my view, in my very limited view of industrial, I've already told you, I, I only like the gods, you know, God flesh, early ministry, you know, uh, much lesser known band, soul storm. Uh, uh, you know, my view is like, what is, what is really respected from those bands catalogs? Is there like early to mid period stuff, which, you know, by today's standards, is very simple you know what i mean it's bass guitar program drums you know um you know, you know shouted vocals or pitch shifted vocals or both um you know some samples here and there that are repeated as part of the song and throw in a bowl and you're done you know um and you know and you know electronic music as a whole uh and you know we're talking EDM and all that kind of stuff is, is, is a lot more complicated, I think, musically. But it's it's hard to to inject that same sort of excitement because if you want to have, do like heavy industrial, in my opinion, you've got to be simple and brutal. And 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 maybe those paths were so well trod by the originators, it's really hard to do that again and and be as impactful, you know. I could be wrong, you know, but but that's kind of my view on it. And I think that bands that sort of like, you know, cross the line, you know, like, you know, bringing in more industrial elements, but did get a little more like, you know, um, you know, a lot, a lot more tempos or faster or black, you know, like Fear Factory is a good example. You know, there was definitely an industrial element to their sound. I mean, they had a guy, what, uh, Reese Fulber. Reese Fulber played, from Frontline Assembly. Yeah. Frontline Assembly played on their records. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But, you know, uh, you know, I, I think they're kind of the exception that proves the rule. And 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 just like Pitch Shifter did later on, I mean, you know, Fear Factory had their fall off into new metal, too, you know. Um, but um, but again, you know, their earlier stuff, you know, their first two albums, I still love to this day. I really love. The first oh, yeah, they're great. Um, and uh, even even still like stuff off uh, obsolete, actually. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway. So that that's kind of my view on it is is that it's really hard to kind of reproduce what made that music the early metal industrial metal that I think is good so popular was was like it's it was ferocious in its simplicity you know what I mean and you know for it to kind of carry on and to and to be reinvented you know throwing things on top of it sort of takes the power away you know what I mean now I would love for someone to figure out how to 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 to, to to grab that same ferocious and simplicity and make it more modern and interesting. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, no one really has yet, you know? <clears throat> um, so that's kind of my take on it. So. DJ, your thoughts. Well, I got, you know, I got into the, you know, the Godflesh record and I never had any real desire to look beyond that. And, other bands of the genre that did come across my path never interested me all that much like ministry it's just something i'm they're just a band i've just never cared about i don't enjoy i hear shades of that in this and and i but it just it never did anything for me and you know my opinion on this i mean to me you know i just feel like you know evolution in these bands like any band in any genre, um, it drives fans to and away from them. You know, take um, the first thing that comes to my mind as a kind of a screaming example of a band that went from one extreme to the next is Anathema. You know, they're a completely different band now. And, you know, when they first started out, they were, you know, a death metal band reminiscent of My Dying Bride or whatever, you know, in that, you know, in that vein. And now they're like Pink Floyd or whatever they do. They do now. The and, Beatles but, mix with Pink Floyd, yeah. <clears throat> right? But they have their fan base. They're still quite successful doing what they do. But and with these 
electronic bands, industrial bands, it seems to me that you know they've they've evolved and they've changed and they and so the fans that were with them, you know they they shed some of those, they gain new ones. The 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 style and somebody said it in the comments too. The style itself is very niche, you know. Um, it's and so even though with the popularity it did gain. I still don't think it. I don't. I don't ever see this as where you, you. You know, you have ministry who is a big band doing. You know, working inside this kind of style. Um, Very effectively too. Yeah, yeah, and everything else is just kind of in its orbit. You know, and you know maybe that's this the the case for this style of music. It's like you know, there's only there's only only so much market share for any of these bands you know you can't you know i think i've met i've talked about this before it's like you know you can only have so much room you know there can only really be one metallica one cannibal corpse one I mean, how many dark throne dark throne and burzum fans client clones do we need i mean really well, well, they, and, and they're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna always have that yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. only but only one of those bands can occupy that you know higher space it can only really be that top of the you know top of the heap and then everything will also always be in in the periphery and and you know maybe it's the case with this industrial these industrial bands and this style of music that that's just you know you've got ministry that really fills in that hole and then everything else is kind of to the outside of it now again my take on this is pretty limited because again i just never felt the need to go beyond you know i got street cleaner blew my mind just everything, you know, the, the just everything about that record, the way it was produced, the vibe that it created, it just, I just absolutely love that record. There's so many little things about it that are so cool, and there there's moments of this on pit, on this pitch shifter record, but it just never, I just don't think it gets there. But so I don't know for for that, I just I think maybe it's just the nature of this genre. To kind of live where it lives you know i mean you look at like a band like you know you you know skinny puppy what a, you know what a niche band they're a big band but they are just kind of this singular kind of group i mean i tried to get into that band and they're just there's just no two ways about it i can't i just cannot do that band and but i understand you know but they have their popularity their shows are always you know whatever when they were doing i don't even know are they even isn't it, what is they're, it, they're, they what? just did their last their final tour i was gonna say i thought, yeah. I thought i'm thinking somebody died or something but well yeah but, Dwayne, um, Dwayne did he overdosed on heroin years and years and years ago right, okay so okay so my fuzzy memory about stuff again i don't keep up with these bands all that much yeah. so you know i know you're a fan i had a a friend back in junior high who got turned on to him his older brother used to listen to him and then it was kind of weird, but yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to pigeonhole, you know, pin down any one direct thing. You know, the, the style is still prevalent. It's still out there. There's still bands making this music, but they just don't get the attention. You know, maybe it was fresher back in the day. And, and so it was more exciting and everybody was standing up and taking notice because back in the nineties, everybody was looking for the next big thing and something to, you know, the major labels wanted something to, to capitalize on and, and and molest and, and take advantage of like they do with every artist and you know so these bands are getting drawn in and whatever and so you know it it could be a lot of a lot of things i think in that kind of uh you know swirling mess of thought there so i don't take it for what you will well for me um the question can it still exist now or be popular now what was the question again what it could it be? let me see here uh, yeah like why is there a why, place for it yeah is there is there a place for it and for a time period that has such an early like a fascination with early 90s metal why is this one absent you know as technologically advanced as recording has become and uh, you know techno is huge in europe in particular i say yes and there's still bands that bob just mentioned them actually i pulled them for this specific thing a band called realize this demolition album and um machine violence this is not as good as the first one this is very much in that pitch shifter program drums vibe and you got here on 20 bucks spin although this leans more into the true industrial vibe but you've got black magnet this is on 20 bucks spin 
these two records are really good really good industrial there's some metal essence to these both of these albums and it's just it's on a metal a death metal based label and it just it seems like the wrong crowd in fact i talked to dave a bit about it and he was saying it's a tough sell but he likes it so much he, he still wants to do it and i think it's cool he's doing it because these albums kick ass they're both great and the covers very much suit the art or the music on again more industrial leaning but there's a metal edge to it and then there was this band this is a complete pitch shifter god flesh ripoff they're no longer but depressor filth grace this is a crustier side of that plotting drum machine pitch shifted vocals their debut full length and we have a promo in here i've been trying to listen to i was thinking about reviewing it's uh by a band called dusk i don't know where they're from but it's got like a rotted factory on the it looks like an industrial album it is an industrial album there's black metal influence to it but it seems like to jim's point you know it's like it's technologically it seems like technology is at your disposal you have metal as your foundation the sky's the limit the sky you could do whatever your imagination like i listen to like that skinny puppy record or two dark park it just blows me away the layering and they would have like a, a radio they would be recording a, a, a track with the radio they're going in between stations and recording it and mixing that recorded you know static picking up stations and it mix it into the track and becomes part of the track it becomes another instrument they were so and they had like synthesizers that were broken and they would get this sound out of them and it, it became their sound and it's so inventive to me and so incredible and you listen to it it sounds like a nightmare like someone went in their brain at night and recorded it metal bands trying to do industrial they don't get that they don't get that they don't get that creative with it they're like okay you know you listen to like screw or um they sound like a ministry almost verbatim um, one band that did do a good job with it is Mysticum, you know, the first album in Streams of Inferno. Straight up black metal album with drum machine and they mix in like these machine noises. They used to work at a construction at this industrial yard and they would record the sounds of the machines and mix it. And that's, that's the right idea. And then they got more EDM. So yeah, is there a place for it? Absolutely. But I don't think people influenced by early Pitch Shifter, early Godflesh can get beyond that. They have a hard time saying, okay, I mean, they, they live in the influence a little too much. Um, which, since I like that sound, I appreciate that. But, you know, you're right. It gets, it gets a bit old, you know, here in the, if I had, if I had a hundred albums by different bands that all sound like Godflesh, I mean, it's, it's the same thing with Dark Throne. You know, there's a million bands that ripped that off. It, it hits a, it hits a saturation point and you just want something different do i think there's space for it now absolutely i think i think now more so than ever there's a space for it mixing it with new metal which um you know pitch shifter got acclaim being on the soundtrack i think fear factory did as well didn't they they were on some soundtrack and it blew up their career big time that's just when you start getting on soundtracks you're getting too mainstream for my taste and you started adopting new metal i just i can't go there i, I appreciate the people the fact people like that stuff um but man i just it just yeah I, I i can't go where that's going but what do you think on this whole thing kellen i don't know if i answered yeah. your question but no no you, i mean you're one i thank you for all the recommendations right like uh i will go back and and watch this stream and, and check those out i think i'd seen you talk about the 20 buck spin band but um black magnet it's good yeah, black magnet check out the first one for sure yeah but like those are all uh cool recommendations and i've seen a few in the chat as well so there'll be a lot for me to kind of go back and research here um yeah i it was interesting though like the first because my impression listening to this was in the same way like when you would listen to a thrash metal record and it just sounds so unapologetically 80s like I was listening to this and it just sounded like a sort of time, you know, travel back to a t like early 90s for me. It just unmistakably it doesn't there's nothing like this that regularly come across now. Um, and I was kind of curious as to why it hadn't been pursued. Um, so like a few other sort of notes here was. If I had to guess, I think some of the creativity here has been poured into like the noise and power electronics sort of side of that, like intersects, I think, 
parts of like the black metal or black death scene. Um, that's a very niche world and kind of experimental and hostile. Um, so it avoids a lot of the sort of commercial leaning stuff, which is kind of the next point for me is like, um, the negative connotation with what I hear in this record. Like to my point earlier, Bone, this will be sort of a segue into the songwriting here, is I don't know if modern fans hear this and immediately can pick out like the groove metal, new metal sort of baby in this, right? Like in its early sort of inception, if that turns people off. If they hear that and they're like, man, this is leaning into sort of some tough guy metal that comes later in the 90s. I'm all out. Like, I, I don't want to I'm not I don't want to be a part of this at all. So I wonder if because of the genres that followed and how uh, most metal fans nowadays would never like listen to a record from that, like a new metal or a groove metal kind of thing. Um, if that immediately disqualifies much interest in a record like this. So um, all those kind of negative connotations, does the, the riffing here, I guess there'll kind of be a segue into the songwriting and I'll let you guys take over. Um, is the riffing, it feels to me like it inherited a lot of the simplicity and commercialization of thrash in the time period like a kind of palm muting riff style. But a, a little bit more groove too. There's a lot of groove yeah, on this record. Right, but like the the, the whole sort of processed and recycle thing um, mm -hmm. ends up like sort of amplifying the groove element. Um, so the, that time period when, you know, thrash metal is sort of turning into groove rock, commercial thrash, I feel there's a weird sort of inheritance that, a record like this has and i know that was part of you know to listen to you describe it part of the sort of commercialization and sort of this this turn shift abandoned transition right mm -hmm. um but i think that's a, a lot of the guitar work or at least how they framed the riffs on this to me it's that's what they i hear is they're borrowing sort of like groove rudimentary thrash riffing simplifying it to some incredibly basic structure and then sort of you know looping it over and over during the course of these songs so um outside of that like there's these you know the a lot of the i know you're probably you by comparison to something like skinny puppy the layering here isn't isn't as quite as diverse or it's very pedestrian right <laughs> compared um, to that stuff yeah right but like i think you need that as a backdrop Right. Yeah. And framework in order to separate it from a Pantera. Right. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, the, the, the riff for walk. <laughs> right. And yeah. the, you know, you've got also got the samples going Three on. As well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's like this, the sampling in it. Um, the one song that really stood out to me as like, is triad the fourth track yep that was like the danciest on this record to me um the way that that like refrain goes through in the course of the song it's simple but that like repeat side of things to me felt very much like a dance song yeah um and uh a clear departure from like what would i metal you would be used to hearing so i'll kind of use that as a segue into the songwriting and let you guys take over from there Right. Uh, musicality and composition. Jim. Uh, oh, good topic, too, by the way, Kellen. Sorry. I, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt you, Jim. It's I mean, all good. It's all, well, this, well, is I, a, I, this is a style we have I, not talked about. And I think sure, sure. Cool. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I took my question and rolled it into it. I stole your you know question. So we'll just yeah. kind of keep going. Right. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, yeah. Musicality and composition. Um, I, I don't think there's much, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I, you know, to Kellen's point, I feel like the riffs are kind of pedestrian. You know, I feel like the, the, the best riffs on this record are basically lifted from ministry and, and Godflesh. Um, 
you know, to your point about groove metal, Kellen triad at that riff to me is very groove metal on that song mm -hmm. and, uh, and very repetitive. Um, uh, and, you know, I do like him saying, I'll fuck it up if I want to over and over. I, <laughs> for some reason, like, I really like that. I was like, hey, yeah, I like that vibe. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I just, uh, there really wasn't, you know, musically or even from an industrial standpoint, like I, I, I just wasn't really like, you know, wowed by, the sample choices, in fact, I mostly found them to be irritating. Um, and, uh, you know, wh whereas like when I listened to like, you know, A Mind is a Terrible Thing is Taste by Ministry, like I felt like all the samples are well placed. All of them make sense within the context of the song. Even, you know, the album, uh, you know, even the one with the weird symbols, the one with NWO on it that everybody knows, you know, the one that blew them up. Um, still like the usage of samples there i thought made more sense on that album you know i, I don't think that one's as, is as strong as it might as a terrible thing to taste overall but there but the the overall composition of that record i felt was like much better done than what we're seeing on here um there are you know uh, some highlights though i mean you know uh for me it's gatherer of data on on, on that one song there's a lot more riff variety, you know, there, there's, we agree. We agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that was when they, they really pushed themselves to, to, to bring more um, sounds in terms of like the guitar work and even like the industrial elements, I think like were, were better placed and much stronger. And, and so they definitely had it in them. I, I just, and I, I feel like it's all over the place and industrial that, you know, they're, they're pulling prior to this one. I, I just feel like, and, and, you know, maybe this was them, you know, with, with the cleanliness of the guitar, which was, it's super clean, super clean guitar sound compared to, you know, the previous record. Maybe this was like them wanting to kind of like be a little less abrasive, you know, you know, be a little bit more palatable. And, you know, I'm not faulting them for that, you know, um, you know, you know, I, I, I understand the sentiment, you know, in the 90s, I was hoping that my band would get, you know, I could I could live off of it and not have to have a job, which was complete, you know, uh, uh, pipe dream, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know, but uh, but at the same time, it usually means that the music quality suffers. And I do think in this case, that's what happened. So, you know, I, I, I don't. Now, this is not to say the pitch shifter doesn't have the capability to have good musicality and composition. I just feel that, you know, as they were looking and this, I feel like they were starting to look towards being, you know, more mainstream on this record, you, you, know, you know, that they were leaving, you know, the talent that like made them what they were, you know, a little bit behind. Right on. TJ. Yeah, so. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the things that Jim said, I, I, I pretty much agree with, I think there's a lot of missed opportunities on this for the, the creative angles with the industrial elements of this band. Um, a lot of the samples that are on here are either annoying or, uh, so kind of buried, they're subtle, they're lost. They don't add anything to the the tracks i think they're they're leaning so hard on these kind of you know creeping death metallica-esque crunch crunch blackened you know <laughs> you know blackened uh metallica album type riffs that um you know there's power there but it's just boring um there's there's just no there's just no no surprises no you know, just kind of like, you know, dun, 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 dun. It's, it's like it's heavy, but it there's it doesn't really go any place. <clears throat> um, you know, it's like it, it's it's like why I don't like prong. It's just boring. You know, I don't know. I never did understand the appeal of that band. Um, and it's in the same way. It's just like it's heavy and stuff. And what's the Tommy Victor's got a cool voice and whatever. But um, I just, you know, and, and I, I like I like his singing here on this. Um. I, it, it's it's loud and angry and it seems pretty cool. I'm not familiar with anything this band has done prior to this. 
you mentioned Marty and Jim seems to be saying the same thing that the previous stuff is a little bit more aggressive and whatever. It's dark and dirty. It's very, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's, on, it's very underground sounding. Right. Um, and so I don't know, you know, I mean, um, yeah, uh, you know, and I, you know, and I definitely feel like listening to this, these guys are talented. I don't see anything about this that is lacking in any, you know, any creative effort. They're definitely trying to really deliver something here. I th- I feel like this is this to me feels like a band that is trying to become more accessible. You know, they're they're trying to open the gates, um, and so they're leaning more on their guitar and these kind of groovy, crunchy, heavy parts, and laying you know more into that. Um, but I just think that there was kind of a lost opportunity. Uh, with a lot of the other stuff that is what you know supposed to define the 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 style um you know the electronic elements and things like that i just it just uh, the samples seem like an afterthought and it just kind of gets lost in there so i don't you know there it in the song structures themselves everything really seems to follow a very predictable pattern through the whole record everything kind of seems to begin and end in the same place and follow the same kind of thing and then they inject these kind of um what is that like uh to die is gain it's it's just repetitive same thing he repeats the sample it's and and again uh, repetition is par for the course in this in this type of you know with god like the guy i I will keep going back to that because that's my frame of reference for this you know that's omnipresent on that album but it's just it's done in such a <laughs> it's just so so more effective there you know it's more filthy um, it, it's yeah got more you know and and resonates you know, and better it, you know maybe i mean i don't know if it's an apples or oranges comparison but you know it's still it's just here it just doesn't seem to deliver as much it, it you know there's some cool moments um some heavy moments um but by and large again like my initial like i said in the beginning it just really was was just kind of underwhelming so, I mean, TJ, if they had played the samples into, like, I always felt when listening to the songwriting here, the samples sort of follow a riff. You don't actually mm-hmm. get them sort of interlaced. Mm-hmm. So it's like riff, sample, then you kind of go through the next sort of cycle. Right. Did you feel if they had spent, like, when you mentioned that the, <laughs> in terms of, like, the samples not being used properly or they're sort of boring, is that, like, what you're referring to? Would, is there a different way you would like to have them used? I just, I to me, they just the, a lot of it really comes down to how subtly they're they're put in here. To to my you know my take on this, listening to it, the you know the stuff just kind of comes and goes, and it doesn't really present itself in a way that is something like wow, that was a cool moment, and that's really neat that they put that in there, and that really added something cool to the song. It, they're just kind of in there and there's places where it, they do some some tape drags and some other little things that are kind of cool but by and large it just doesn't seem to be it just doesn't seem to have the presence that you know the 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 guitar riffs and the drums do in this this that this that seems to be what's really driving the songwriting in this and then the rest of that stuff is just kind of there um there is that one track on here I don't even remember what it is now um uh, uh, routine that's just purely noise, you know, yeah. the, the whole thing. It's just, it just with a, a drum a beat. Rack. There's a drum loop yeah. and they're putting noise over yeah. the top. Yeah. It's just, it's just a racket piece. And it's like, okay, you know, apparently, what, I mean, it, apparently they're saying on the CD version that noise piece goes into a remade version of Landfill, which is the, the lead off track on um, the industrial. Okay. So, yeah, see, they, they redid. I, I can't imagine a slick produ- produce, no pitch shifter. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. So I just it to me. I just it, to me it feels like just these the the way you know the those elements and those things that kind of are supposed to be uh, you know an ever present part of this. They just didn't seem like they were really putting a lot of emphasis on that, and it just it just this seems like a lost opportunity to make things a little more interesting than they were. That, that if that makes any sense. <clears throat> All right. Kellen. No, I got a chance to go because I mean, I kind of, so it'll be your turn because I got well, a chance to transition from my, 
my piece into you. All right. Um, uh, I think where the changes lie in here, I think for, for the most part, the music itself, we'll start with the music here because I think there's some good stuff going on here. There's some songs on here. I really do like, but instead of evolving in a way that maybe adds different character to the music, they come up with a couple good riffs and they maybe have three riff maximum to these songs. And instead of, you know, maybe building or expanding upon a musical idea, they take away instead of adding two, they take away. So you have a bass foundation that stays pretty well constant throughout and for the dynamic the dynamic hit is the guitars come in the verse comes in on top of it and then when they want a music break they take those guitars away and what's left but a drum drum beat and the bass line i like it it's an easy effective way to hint at dynamics it and they started writing longer songs on this album and the long the longer song format with this sort of uh, formula that they're working with the music alone is a foundation it gets a bit boring and that gives the the singer j.s clayton the room to step up and actually make these songs something else and he still i mean i'm going to read you the lyrics to landfill the debut song or the lead off track on industrial i love these lyrics i don't know why and i love them in the context of the song hate i hate you you motherfucker drown bleed i wish you would <laughs> i mean that it's a, not a long song but he repeats the line i mean and it's you know this is all the lyrics for the whole album there's not a lot of lyrics on the album so that context is uh, evident on this as well and now he's you've got longer songs he has to fill in what does he do he repeats lines a lot and there's not that that weird demonic twist of the pitch shifted vocals to make it interesting it just i don't hate his yell, yelling voice it's okay but he's just not doing a lot with his lyrical placement he's just kind of shouting over and repeating lines i think it's a missed opportunity here another thing that's a big change from the past is they actually have real drums interlaced with the program drums you can tell there is a lot more groove to the the songs and sometimes even a tribal vibe which it starts to lead into them going more dubstep or whatever they went with on uh, www.pitchshifter.com album and uh, infotainment, all this other stuff. They got way more dancey, and that's kind of uh, the precursor to that. So, I mean, very much transitional in that aspect as well. I, I don't dis... Godflesh experimented with it too. What, hate songs in E minor? No, no, songs of love and hate. Something that I'm thinking of Fudge Tunnels. Um, songs of love and hate. They had a real... They had Ted Parsons from Prong on drums. And it was okay, but man, I want Godflesh to be a drum machine. I just do. Their their drum their dr the albums with drums work. They they sound good, but I like them barren, stripped down, mechanical sounding. That feeds the aesthetic perfectly for me. Um, you start mixing in the real drums on Pitch Shifter here, it starts to it just has a different feel, more of an organic feel when it should be cold, in my opinion. So I think the songs on here more or less work. There's a couple filler tracks. We're going to get into songs here in a second. Um, but yeah, let's get into production. No, wait. Yeah, let's get into the production. TJ. Um, really not much to complain about with the production. I mean, I it's pretty good for what it is. Um, the guitars are heavy. The drums are heavy. The vocals are there. You know, again, a lot of the weird sonics and noise makers and fart machines and whatever else they're employing in here are kind of buried. Um, you know, they're, um, I mean, I'm listening for this stuff and I'm kind of, and it's like, it's, it's there, but it's subtle. Um, but I think overall, I mean, the, I like the production on this. It's, you know, um, it's a little dry maybe. Um, but it's still, I think it delivers everything They're They're, you know, all their sonics are there for the most part. I just, I think that maybe the mix, you know, maybe this is the way they mixed it. I don't know. You know, their their creative muse being whatever it is. You know, those parts are where they are and whatever. And but um, I think by and large, it's it's a really cool production for this this record. And um, you know, ninety was this ninety three or whatever. <clears throat> so so yeah, um, I really don't have any any real gripes about it. Jim. 
Yeah, you know, everything that TJ said is true. Um, and I agree with it. It's 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 really clean. There's nothing wrong with it. But to me, that's what's wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's too clean. It's it it, uh, it it's it's not dark enough. It's not it's not fun and brutal enough like industrial was like you know just like immediately when i played that album like after listening to this song i was like oh there it is like this is like you know this is that heaviness this is that darkness i was looking for you know i mean um uh and and i do think that you know um e even though the riffs aren't as um to me like uh you know um there are some metal riffs here but there's also like some more like open chord rock type riffs you know um <laughs> you would hear on some like more of the rockier stuff that like ministry would do um but i still think if they had like had gone for a much raw more raw production that it would have sounded heavier overall it would have sounded more intense overall but because they went clean you know because they probably had more money to spend in the studio or just chose to spend whatever the story is um it, it, it pulled the power from it. So, you know, from an objective point of view, is there, is there anything wrong with this production? No, it's, it's, it's really good. But for me, from a stylistic point of view, that is what's wrong with it. And it, is that it's, it's so clean that, that um, what, you know, what would have made this interest, this album interesting for me, what was, you know, you know, taken like a, you know, a, a, a more simpler approach in the studio and just, you know, getting in there and, you know, just bash, let's bash it out really quickly and, and, uh, you know, and just make it, you know, make it raw, you know, but Hey, you know, I, I, I like I said, you know, this isn't the genre I'm super familiar with, you know, um, you know, you know, maybe this is, uh, you know, more along the lines of, you know, the recipe, you know, for, you know, respect and success in this scene. I, I don't know, but, but for me, like, you know, I, I just, you know, really wanted to go back, you know, to the other stuff. And, and even though like the cleanliness of the production, you know, didn't bother me as much as I kind of do it more and more. Um, I, I, I never left from that initial feeling that, that it, it was overall, you know, detrimental to the impact. Of the record. I just it. wanted to say, uh, we're going to, we're going to write this day down. It'll live in infamy. Are we you can act on camera? <laughs> Yeah, no, no, not not the resleeving. The fact that you can actually hear the bass really well on this album, and Jim did not make any mention of it. Just want to say this is this is a first. This is definitely a first, and I'm a little shocked. I'm a little dizzy. I couldn't even resleeve this record. I'm so shaken by the fact. Anyway, Kellen, <laughs> I'm a resleeve now. <clears throat> um, so it was interesting, like to, to your point, Marty, about like how the guitar sort of removal and arrival serves as like the dynamic punch mm -hmm. right reminds me like you know kind of tie into my thoughts here about the mix for this record because i i think of you know electronic dance music operating in the same way with drums right mm -hmm. like when the drum track is removed and then arrives and that serves as like the dynamic punch to a record i feel the same sort of narratives at play here we've just traded instruments um, yep. totally. And, and that was the, the one thing that I think stood out about the mix to this is like when you listen to a, a hip hop record or a dance record, the bass and drums and vocals are sort of the focal point of the mix. Yep. And I think that's a bit more evident here. Well, I would by no means call the guitar sound small. There's parts of this that are like, it's pretty in, like, you know, loud. It's kind Dumb. of a rock and production. The, the guitar is yeah. kind of a rock and roll kind of production in the guitar. So it, it's it's not like it's an afterthought, like that unholy record that we listened to, that the second unholy record, which was yeah. like the guitars were like in the room down the hall. Like yeah. this is definitely, you know, a, a far it's a forceful guitar sound. But I spent a good amount of the time listening to this, thinking about how the between the bass, drums, and where the vocal placement it reminded me a little bit more of a potentially a different genre mix. Um, mm. And it didn't in that sense sound a lot of, like a traditional metal record to me. Now, part of that is probably like the industrial sort of mechanical operation to how a record should, you know, sound or operate. Um, but I, I, in that sense, it was a bit of a confused record in terms of the mixing for me. 
Um, it didn't quite satisfy the pure, like grimy industrial sound, um, but it also didn't sound like a, a record uh, that you would hear mixed for metal. Um, it didn't have the same instrumentation sort of uh, in, in, my, in my mind. So I didn't dislike the production for me, but I, I definitely struggled with how to sort of listen to this record and identify the mix. Um, to, your, to your point, though, no, none of the instruments sound, you know, invisible or consumed. Uh, one instrument isn't sort of swallowing the same space in terms of its presentation. So I don't have any things to complain about in terms of individual sort of instrumentation. And we can debate like within their catalog if we liked their earlier raw, grimy sort of crust punk kind of deal. But um, more than anything, like the creep of electronic or hip hop sort of production style, I thought was an interesting note here. Yeah, I mean, it's a very slick sounding record, and and I agree with Jim that it might be. I, I though I like the bigness of it, that it's heavy sounding. It's just not what I was expecting, and um, maybe the part of the problem. But big guitar sound, big bass sound, big drum sound, everything sounds where it's supposed to be. There's a couple songs where there's some of those weird pitch shifter melodies in the background, but they put it way too far in the back along with a little bit of noise like they're trying to fill in the gaps on a couple of these songs but it should have been up front because the crunch the the, the crunch riff that it would have been empowering was too far out front so all you hear was like kind of a boring crunch and you could hear through the headphones in the background like a, a melody line that should have been up front but so i mean I, that's the only real real complaint for the most part you know drum bass vocals but are kind of out in the out in front and the guitar tone guy something in my freaking eye sorry the guitar tone, very big rock, very big rock and roll sound for sure. Um, I don't hate it. It's just it's them sounding super slick, and it's just weird. It's just weird. Um, favorite, least favorite songs. Jim. Uh, yeah, I mentioned it before. I, I actually do really like Gatherer of Data. Uh, you know, um, I I think that you know production aside if the songs had that much, uh, you know, you know, variety in the guitar playing and, uh, you know, samples that were kind of like, you know, mixed well, like I like the way that, that, that sample, uh, when they do the down picked riff, um, uh, you know, Paul muted down picked riff, like the sample over that, like just flows right over the top of it does really well. And, and, and even the lyrics are cool and catchy, like, you know, you know, do as I say, don't make waves. You know what I mean? Like, like that's a cool, like, you know, you know, us versus them kind of a, you know, uh, industrial vibe. So yeah, I really like that song. Um, and, uh, the one, uh, you know, right after it had some more, a riff variety too, but then it, it was NCM, I think it was kind of beat up by the, the samples repeated too much again. And, oh, I love that. That's my favorite song on the album actually. Anyway, uh, well, I mean, man, there are so many bands have sampled, you know, cool hand Luke, you know, what we got here is a failure to communicate most of all guns and roses. I mean, like why man, so many other cool things to sample. Like why that? I mean, it's, I've, I've heard that sample so many times. It's just, it's just not cool uh, to me, but, um, uh, and so besides, um, gatherer of data also like a higher form of killing uh the the riff there is is i think one of the heaviest on the records um uh the tempo is it's a little bit like it's a little bit ministry like but that's you know not necessarily a bad thing uh diable the opener you know um uh, that's a pretty good song you know it's emblematic of what you're gonna get but uh, uh other than that man the it, it, it kind of it's, it's it kind of falls off for me like uh uh to die is gain Oh. You know that that that's right up there with one in their pride from Celtic Frost from being complete waste of space on a record. You know, like, <laughs> again the sample repeated way too much. You know, to die his gain over and over and over again, saying it over and over and over again. You know, you know, yelling it over and over again, and then the record scratch sounds man, that's super lame, man. <laughs> like, what's happening here? So, yeah, yeah, I. I Highly recommend fast forwarding past that one if you give this one a chance. Um, you know, uh, ephemeral that one is definitely hard rock sounding to me, to your point, Marty. Like that, that's the rock and roll song on, on this record to me. Yep. 
Um, it's really, and I got a note here. It says it's really only the bass and to a lesser extent the vocal that make it metal ish. So th that that song is um, definitely you know not a, a bright moment to me for them uh, ephemeral. But yeah, so for me, if you're gonna check out the good stuff, it's you know a higher form of killing and gatherer of data and uh, completely uh, disregard to die's game. <laughs> All right, TJ. Uh, yeah, I thought the opening track was cool, Diable. Um, I like the mood; it's pretty heavy and driven. It's uh, I don't know, it's cool. It's not a, it's not a terrible track. Um, higher form of killing. I th it's one of that. Uh, think between that and uh, Gatherer of Data is kind of those are probably two of the heaviest tracks on the this record. Um, and then uh, least favorites, uh, to die is gain just a lame and repetitive and routine is just a you know a noise thing it's just ridiculous whatever so yeah that's kind of it Cullen we're all in agreement here I really I mean I, I really think that so viable and gather of data gather of data for me that one did the best job of like a seamless metal track. And I don't know if it's because there's like a double bass sort of push in that song as well. Um, but that, I mean, I was happy to get that later in this record. Um, but Diable, you know, is another one where like this started off. Um, and uh, it's very loud it, when it, he does that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, it won me over. I like, forget myself. I, if, if if the first if we had began this record with to die is gain, I don't know how much of a <laughs> how on board I would have been. Yeah. But I, I would have boycotted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would have been a I show up five minutes before the stream and oh Kellen. God, no. <laughs> you got your uh, umbrella again. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> um but yeah, no diable. I, I like that song and it it was like okay, I'm I'm gonna enjoy this record and I'll be able to kind of make it through this week and I wanted to check out this this band so that I was happy there but yeah to die is gain like catches me off guard because triad I it, it's a standout on this record um, and I I don't necessarily love it as much as diable or gather of data but for me it's sort of like a point of interest like i will come back to that track and I, they do the sort of the dancey thing well and i don't know why i necessarily like it but i kind of dig it so um it, it, that's the one track i think that is kind of kind of on the fence on but i would also recommend as like an important listen on this record all right i'll fuck it up if i want to <laughs> 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 well my favorite song on here is ncm and it's the most i think energy driven um uh, favorite track on the album bass foundation is ever present and the vocal samples become a rhythmic hook in the track the sample the way they use the samples on this sounded very ministry uh, you know the the song with the um thieves with the the drill the power drill sound it had that kind of vibe to it i love thieves man i love i love that album man it's that's the, their song. best record for sure it is yeah. um uh, the verse riff is hard hitting and uh, jss's vocals are their most venomous effective use of dynamics on this song it's their fastest song on the album too i also like ephemeral quite a bit repetitive but armed with an infectious flow of or groove if you will lyrics are more engaging than the same brief phrase repeated over and over good song though a bit long-winded triad I, I don't get the danciness on that um it could have been written during the submit sessions if the vocals it would have maybe fit on the album even if the vo vocals here were pitch shifted uh, i like the off-putting guitar melody lines on that one um uh, ma, 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 ma. gather of data another heavy tune the noise and guitar melody lines are a bit too buried in the mix so the focus on a lifeless crunch riff during the verse seems uninteresting it's only in like one part of the song that happens but it's a good song otherwise a higher form of killing headbanger of a track and hard hit hard driving clayton's uh lyrics feel a bit thin due to repeat uh, repeating the same lines multiple times more substance could have spiced up the few musical chunks linked together and added more interest 
Uh, what else have I got here? Uh, today's game, my least favorite, obviously. Pointless loops with a steady bass line. Accenting a repeated sample with the same phrase vocally is pointless. Filler track. Terrible. And actually, I like the... Apparently, the CD has a longer version of Routine at the very end. Digitally, I mean, I have the tape, and it does not have the landfill thing on there. But digitally, it's like a four-minute long noise piece. And I think it's a fitting end to the album. It didn't bother me. I don't dislike noise. I don't ever really care to listen to it. But if it's on, the thing that held me interest to it, you know, noise for the sake of noise, if it's just formless static, which noise, that's kind of a thing in the noise realm. I, I don't care about that. But with this, at least there's a drum beat to follow. If there's something to follow other than just scraping ass noise, then I, I can typically, I can I can tolerate it. But um, yeah, that's the main breakdown of likes and dislikes for me. Uh, judgment, final thoughts. Kellen, you picked it. We'll start with you yeah, first. I mean, I bought it and I'm happy. I, I have some pit shifter in my collection and be perfectly honest after tonight like you know i will get deeper and deeper into the industrial world um so it's something that's kind of newer for me as a, a listener but uh at this record by no means turned me off to potentially picking up their earlier ones um so yeah i i mean i picked it um i don't have a whole lot of industrial in my collection but you know, by the, probably the next time, what I'll say is like, I would almost guarantee when we do like, what are you listening to? There'll be like a pit shifter update. We'll all have a, a couple of their newer albums. Good. Cause I'm saying right now, Kellen, you need to get, you need to hear this one at the very least, which is great, but this is my favorite submit. It's a mini LP. It's awesome. It is so good. Uh, Gritter. What an awesome song. This is great. Definitely check this one out. Okay. Jim. John, you got to listen to Mine is a Terrible Thing to Taste by Ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's a must. That, that's that, an absolute must. That record front to back is amazing. I also like Twitch. I also like Land of Rape and Honey, but Mind is... Yeah. It's yeah. it's such a great record. Yeah, Other than the one, the So What rap song on there is annoying, but uh, <laughs> no, not So What. Um, what the hell's the name of that song? Oh, there's like a rap song on there. I don't know. Anyway, continue on. So What's a great song. It's, yeah, So What's <laughs> actually a good one. I'll got to say you're crazy, but... <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that the rap song. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a great record. But anyway... Uh, also, Palehead uh, Ministry, another ministry sub-project with Ian McKay, or McKay from Minor Threat on vocals. It's called Palehead. It sounds like Ministry with uh, Ian from Minor Threat singing on it. It's really good. Yeah, and, and it's hard to find, Kellen. I mean, you, you can find, obviously, uh, you know, the stream of it, but I would recommend Soulstorm, Darkness Visible. They're good. Like, like that. Canadian that, band. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. I, I, I was going to show it tonight, but I couldn't find my CD. I don't know where it went. <laughs> Mal Havoc's also, another good band from that era, too. Mal Havoc. They did put out some yeah, good stuff. I heard those guys. But yeah, uh, that Soulstorm, Darkness Visible is really good. Very, very dark. Just really huge guitar and bass sound on that um but pitch shifter um so yeah final thoughts is um yeah i i don't think this is going to be something i return to um uh you know i i will i would definitely return to industrial uh i i, I like that record um uh, yeah that one was really check out cool. submit too please 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 that is such a yeah great, great i will check great. out submit if, if yeah if, if you they like cleaned up the that. sound a little bit but it's still pitch shifted and ugly it's really a great record good riffs yeah yeah you know i mean you know and that said like i i genuinely do enjoy gatherer of data in a higher form of killing but you know um you know I'm not going to return to the whole album if I only like two songs. Yeah. You know I mean? So, uh, so probably, you know, I'm, I'm not going to return to this, but, uh, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, if, you know, if you're looking for something like, you know, heavy industrial, like yeah, check out their first record. Yeah. That, I think that's where the strength lies. All right. TJ. Yeah. This, um, this has not inspired me to be any more interested in this genre than I already was or wasn't. Um, I, I, I love, uh, God flesh the street cleaner. I love that record, but it just, 
Again, I don't really have any com real compulsion to move beyond that um, at this point. Um, you know, maybe maybe one, one weekend at Fat Camp this year, I might have my mind changed if it makes its rotation in the playlist. You know, some you know uh, all the ministry records and stuff. It's like I'm, I I remember all those records and titles, and I, I know I've heard tracks off of all of them over the years. But it's they're one nothing. of the best bands I ever saw live. I saw them on the I know. mind the mind tours, the most the best show I've ever. Seen. <laughs> Yeah, you've told great. me that story a few times, you know, and uh, I, I believe, I, I absolutely believe you. Um, I'm sure it was a hell of a show. Um, but again, it's just, I don't like me, my personal preferences being what they are, just whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this record's a six. Um, I don't need this record. I won't be buying this record. I won't revisit this record. Um, you know, I appreciate the, I, you know, I, I know this is a bad, I was familiar with this band when he, you know, he, he, I was like, oh yeah, I've heard of these guys never listened to his, you know, a lick of it. Um, you know, like with a lot of these bands, you know, they made their rounds and all the rags back in the day and everything else. So it's like, I know who they are, but there's just no, nothing, nothing that I felt the need to go after. And, you know, I, I'd be curious. I probably end up trying to listen to, you know, like the first one or something, whatever's on Spotify, just to get a sense of it's where they were. Yeah, we're um, get a sense of where they were versus where they are, um, but yeah. So you know, there's no hate here. It it you know it's well executed. It's just not my thing. And for me, I mean, obviously, I had this going into this tonight too. I'm a fan of the early stuff, and this is the last album by this band I like. I don't love this record. There's, a, I think, it's problematic. You can tell they were heading in a direction. It was unforeseen at the time where they were going to go and. Where they ended up, I didn't like it, but um, you know, I do like a handful of the songs. But with the other releases I have by them, I always grab the other stuff first. I'm still looking for this on vinyl, just because I want to complete what I have already on vinyl. But um, yeah, I think it's a good record. I just don't love it. I, I I remember being very disappointed by it when it came out. It had to grow on me for sure, but it did grow on me. There was enough there linking me to the past to make me say, okay, I. I'm okay with some of this stuff, but, um, yeah. Anyway, that was it. And, um, Jim is up for the, you're muted. Okay. It's time to steer the ship <laughs> back to metal, back to thrash. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thrash ish. <laughs> We're going sanctuary, my dudes. Right on. We're going, we're going refuge tonight. Yep. Killer. Yep. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of World Dane. Um, this album is still in rotation for me. It has been since 88. I can't wait to break it down with you guys and talk about that. So get ready. <laughs> I think uh, for those of you that missed, uh, I think we did a deep dive, a sanctuary slash nevermore deep dive with jeff my, my memory serves me right um on the channel so that's in there somewhere so definitely go check that out and we will get ready for refuge denied no we did we we talked to we didn't do a, an actual dive on on just the the album tim we did the whole catalog so yeah the album club's never done no club's never, never done, done then yeah but yeah, that's it. Um, show notes. Friday. Melanie loves death metal and Jimmy from Future Ruins will be joining us. We're going to be doing a deep dive uh, and a ranking of the Borknagar catalog. That'll be fun. And Monday, our old buddy TJ will have a review up covering the new My Dying Bride. His one and done review. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Brace yourself for greatness, pukes. <laughs> <laughs> get ready for cinem a cinematic triumph <laughs> perhaps and he recorded it vertical too so it's like skinny screen the whole time drive he make he does things to just make me crazy is what he does he does things to drive me nuts but it's fine i do what i want i do what i want <laughs> <laughs> you'll fuck it up if you want to <laughs> <laughs> what the man said that's right <laughs> kellen you got anything going on uh, I need to get in front of the camera. I've got a stack here of European power metal to to go through and and talk about. So I don't Fine. I don't know when there'll be a, a video out, but 
Um, Guilt the program. Hard. Come on. I, I know. I know. I, I'm, I'm training here. I gotta, I gotta run a marathon in a month. Give me, give me a break here, my friend. All right. <laughs> Not everyone can, can come downstairs and eat some, you know, chips and mayonnaise and and. <laughs> 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 mayonnaise or miracle whip tj go uh well it depends tuna no. fish is miracle yeah no no it depends tuna fish is miracle whip everything You're else is mayonnaise insane no you don't put mayonnaise and tuna fish you put jim miracle mayonnaise or miracle whip tj's wrong you're no. next <laughs> uh for, for me it's it's duke's mayonnaise man uh so yeah i i, I only like I, I do like miracle whip but only in certain applications like a, like i said <laughs> yeah 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 the only application uh, for miracle whip is right the garbage right there it goes <laughs> my grandma used to make deviled eggs with miracle whip i'm like what is happening <laughs> uh, yeah Okay, Kellen, Miracle Whip, Mayonnaise, which is it? Both go in the trash. I hate them both. I'm, uh, that is why you're skinny. There's, there's, only, there's, only, there's only one. There's only one application that you should ever be using mayonnaise, and it serves as an adhesive on a sandwich. Other than that, it goes in the trash. I want Turn in your food. white privilege card. <laughs> Enough. No Here's mayo. another another good application, which I just recently learned in the last five years for mayonnaise is put it instead of putting butter when you make a grilled cheese, you put mayonnaise on the outside. It's Great. actually it's, I use the oh, genius. Right. That's why I'm so sexy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Y'all rule. Thanks for checking out this record with us. All the people that do the homework. We appreciate you. And. Check out Killing for Company on YouTube. If you're not subscribed, please go there and do it. Go check out Iwas Recordings. Jim puts out some cool stuff. You need to go buy some tapes or CDs or LPs from the man. And TJ and I are in the Glorious Dead. Go check out our band camp. Links in the description. See you Friday, everybody. Take care. <laughs>